speaking like this. to get through, so knowing me, if I ramble like crazy, this is going to be a long video, so I'll try to keep it straight to the point. Okay, so author number one is the most amazing guy ever named Thomas Sowell, who I swear is like 90 now, but he is, you know, he, he doesn't seem 90, he's one of those grandpas that is like definitely jogging along and doing his doing his thing and absolutely thriving still despite that and I hope we get at least another 10 years with this guy because I really think he will help to save humanity from itself <laughs> so I got like half of these books are by Thomas Sowell so I originally kind of heard about him through lots of different people that I really like because I've been trying to learn a little bit more about politics and just the world at large and um, yeah, he's been recommended so many times it's really crazy to me because um, you would have thought we would have read his books in university like I learned a lot about um, the very, very lefty way of viewing the world which in many ways I do love and respect and think they're on to something Thomas Sowell kind of shows that the, even though um, things might be idealistic and sound perfect on paper, they rarely actually go that way for a lot of different reasons. And um, I think I'm gonna just learn a lot from his books. So yeah, he has a YouTube channel as well, which is so, so, so good. I would really recommend it if, you're, if I remember. I'll link it below for you. But it's literally just Thomas Sowell. This first book is called Black Rednecks and White Liberals. Um, I'll read the back to you. I don't know what any of these are about per se. Black Red Necks and White Liberals. Shall I? I've heard about it, but very, very barely, so I'm not exactly sure. 
This explosive new book challenges many of the long prevailing assumptions about blacks, about Jews, about Germans, about slavery, and about education. Plainly written, powerfully presented, and backed with a startling array of documented facts, black rednecks and white liberals takes on not only the trendy intellectuals of our time, but also such historic interpreters of American life as Alexis de Tocqueville, I've never heard of that person, and Frederick Law Olmsted, also not heard of that person, although I did have a teacher whose name was Olmsted, so maybe they're related. <laughs> In a series of long essays, this book presents an in-depth look at key beliefs behind many mistaken and dangerous actions, policies, and trends. It presents historical development of the ghetto culture that is today wrongly seen as a unique black identity. This guy is black, so I feel like, even though I do not believe that you have to be a certain color to talk about things, because we're all human and we're all in this together, he is black before someone tries to call him and say, oh my god, that guy sounds terrible. Look at his YouTube channel, he was, I don't see how anyone could love him if they watched his videos, he is so wise. And he was a Marxist, and then he learned, you know what I mean? Um, a culture cheered on toward self-destruction by white liberals who consider themselves friends of blacks. An essay titled The Real History of Slavery presents a jolting re-examination of that tragic institution and the narrow and distorted way it is too often seen today. The reasons for this animus hatred of Jews and of other groups like them in countries around the world, and explored are explored in an essay that are that asks, "Are Jews generic?" Misconceptions of German history in general, and of the Nazi era. In, oh, I think I might need to read this one next. It sounds so fascinating. <laughs> of the Nazi era in particular, are also examined, so too are the inspiring achievements and painful tragedies of black education in the United States. Black rednecks and white liberals is the capstone of decades of outstanding research and writing on racial and cultural issues by Thomas Sowell. Tom Sowell is a national treasure of America's most perceptive held beliefs, fantasies, and fallacies about racial and ethnic issues have had a particularly painful and deadly history. So exposed 
Clothing, some of them, is more than an academic exercise. The history of intergroup strife has been written in blood in many countries around the world and across centuries of human history. The purpose of this book is to expose some of the more blatant misconceptions poisoning race relations in our time. The reasons for these misconceptions range from simple, innocent ignorance to reasons that are far from simple and far from innocent. Many of the facts cited here may be surprising or even startling to some readers, but they are not literally unknown to scholars. They have simply not been widely discussed in the media or even in academia. be optimistic merely to suggest that racial or ethnic issues can be discussed rationally. Evidence to the contrary is all too abundant in the strident and sweeping condemnations directed against many who have tried to do so. Yet there is also evidence in recent years of growing of a growing willingness to consider views that differ from the racial orthodoxy has prevailed largely unchallenged from the 60s onward in intellectual circles and in the popular media. In any event, these essays summarize the conclusions of more than a quarter of a century of my research on racial and cultural issues, as well as drawing on the work of innumerable other scholars around the world. These writings do not pretend to be definitive. If they provoke thoughts on a subject where cliches and dogmas do often prevail, then this book will have achieved one of its major goals. However, even a work seeking primarily to untangle a complex set of historic social issues can provoke the fashionable question, but what is your solution? Yet there is not the slightest danger that there be will be a shortage of solutions. On the contrary, an abundance of uninformed solutions has been one of our biggest social problems. Any serious consideration of social problems is likely to involve trade-offs rather than neat solutions, and trade-offs depend on values, which can vary from one individual to the next. What trade-offs? others might make after considering what these essays have to offer is not something that can be predicted, nor is such a prediction necessary. There is still much to be said for the ancient adage, with all you're getting, get understanding. If this book can contribute an understanding on a subject where misunderstandings abound, then it will have done its work. Because this book is written for the general public, it does not feature long, convoluted sentences with escape clauses designed to prevent words from being twisted to mean something they were never intended to mean. Common sense can be more readily expected when writing for the general public than when writing for intelligentsia. To prevent the words in the essays that follow from being stretched, twisted, or given clever meanings, let me state here and now what these essays do not mean. Do not mean that one, all Southern rights were or are rednecks. That two, all Black Americans today or in the past or are all Black Americans today or in the past were or are Black rednecks. That three Jews are exactly the same as other groups with whom they are compared, or that four slavery is somehow morally acceptable because. Everyone was guilty of it. One cannot predict, predict much less forestall the clever misinterpretations that others might put on one's words. I love this. It's so true. The most that can be done is to alert honest people to the problem. While this book is not particularly large in bulk, its scope is worldwide and it goes back through centuries. No one can write a book of such scope. scholars who have devoted much of their careers to the study of some particular specialty, such as the history of the agriculture in the southern United States or the origins in Britain or various social groups in America. Such debts are too numerous to be listed to list here, quite aside from the danger of implicating other writers and conclusions which are my own. What must be acknowledged is my debt to the Hoover Institution, which has provided the conditions in this 
another book again. I'm very interested in race relations at the moment because I went to Worcester School 101. That's what I like to call university. And it's not like I disagree with the um, principles or the goals of equality for all. I just think that perhaps as I've learned more, the ways in which lefties these days tend to um, try to achieve that actually that makes everything worse so I'm just excited to learn more about the other perspective so for instance this is by a guy named Jason L. Riley again it was recommended but I have literally no idea much about it other than that it's called Please So again, um, the subtitle is How Liberals Make It Harder for Blacks to Succeed. And then I'll read you just the back, okay? Why is it that so many efforts by liberals to lift the black underclass not only fail but often harm the intended beneficiaries? If please stop, oh, in Please Stop Housing, helping us, Jason L. Riley examines how well-intentioned Welfare programs are, in fact, holding black Americans back. Minimum wage laws may lift earnings for people who are already employed, but they price a disproportionate number of blacks out of the labor force. I've heard of it like that from many other sources. Um, affirmative action is higher education. Affirmative action in higher education is intended to address past discriminations, but the result is fewer black college graduates than would otherwise e exist. I've also heard that from other sources, that's interesting. And so it goes without everything. And so it goes with everything from soft on crime laws, which make black neighborhoods more dangerous, to policies that limit school choice out, out of a mistaken belief that charter schools and voucher programs harm the traditional public schools that most low-income students attend. In theory, these efforts are intended to help the poor, the poor minorities in particular. In practice, they become massive barriers to moving forward. Please stop helping us. Please bear these counterproductive results. People of goodwill want to see more black socioeconomic advancement. But in too many instances, the current methods are appro and approaches aren't working. Acknowledging this is an important first step. Very cool. So, yeah, there you go. I'm excited to read that as well. I need to think of one. Okay, next up, do another Thomas Sowell because I have a thousand of his. This one is called This Grin. Nation and disparities. Um, shall I read you the back? Oh, okay, the sleeve. All right, discrimination and disparities challenges both the fundamental assumptions and the usual kinds of evidence presented even by economists who should know better on issues involving the sources of economic and social disparities. Instead, it offers a new approach backed up by hard evidence from countries around the world and challenges beliefs across the ideological spectrum. Goes beyond its analysis in the first edition of the sources of disparities and the different kinds of discrimination. It deals with the undeniable fact of gross disparities and opportunity without succumbing to the social justice vision of our time, a vision which demonstrably false assumptions oh, with the demonstrably false assumptions and solutions that may not even be possible 
in any comprehensive and sustainable sense. Instead, some more modest but feasible options are examined. Tom, oh, okay, then it's just, okay, there you go. Another book by Tom Sowell. In this revised and expanded edition of Economic, economic Facts and Fallacies, Thomas Sowell exposes some of the most popular fallacies about economic issues in a lively manner that does not require any prior knowledge of economics. These fallacies include many beliefs widely disseminated in the media and by politicians, such as fallacies about urban book that offers some unconventional ideas about how to think about common economic topics. Sowell's book dismantles many of the pervasive fallacies running rampant in politics today, broken into categories of urban life, gender, academia, yes, mama, income, race, and the problems of the third world and economic facts and fallacies, as in his other work, Sowell makes a persuasive and powerful case armed with a solid arsenal of statistics, numbers, and historical facts. Oh no, he's kidding himself. You're too cute and distracting, mister. There you go. Book number three. We're getting there, friends. We're getting there. Why don't we just do all of Thomas Sowell just to get him over with? <laughs> Basic economics. 
fifth edition. Um, let's just quote and see if this is something on the sleeve. Ah, okay. In addition to an updating and revision of the chapters from previous editions, the fifth edition of Basic Economics includes a new chapter, the longest chapter in the book on the reasons for the large differences of income and wealth between nations. It also examines some popular explanations of these differences that will not stand up under scrutiny. This chapter on international economic differences and the chapter on the history of economics itself are unlikely to be found in most books on introductory economics. Both chapters give the beginning student a larger context for Understanding the role of economics. Hi, what are you doing, Goose? I know you want the lovin'. Thank you for kissing me. At the heart of basic economics is what has always been there in previous editions a presentation of economics in plain, straightforward language without the jargon, graphs, or equations that dominate too much of most other economic. Would you just chill out for a little bit, mister? <laughs> You're so silly. How did I get so lucky? Huh? How did mama get so lucky to have tomorrow mom on her lucky mom? Tomorrow on the bobo. Did mama get so lucky? She did. I have the jackpot with you too. Yes, I did. This book is aimed at people with no previous study of the subject, namely the general public and beginning students in economics. Basic economics illustrates economic principles with vivid examples from countries around the world to make these those principles memorable in a way that technical jargon or mathematical presentations may not. Readers' responses to successive editions of basic economics have vindicated this approach, so have the translation of basic economics seven foreign language this overseas. Whether you are reading it in plain English or in any of its translations, the idea behind this book is to make economics as readable and enjoyable as it is eye-opening. Okay, next. Uh, Tommy. Oh, Tom. Tom is out. In tell like This much revised and reorganized edition of Intellectuals and Society is more than half, half again larger than the first edition. This man loves to write. <laughs> Four new chapters have been added on intellectuals and race, including a chapter on race and intelligence. These new chapters show the radically different views of race prevailing among the intelligentsia beginning of the 20th century and at the end, and yet each of these opposite views of race had the same dogmatic quality and the same refusal to countenance differing opinions among contemporaries, much less engage dissenting opinions in serious debate. That's very true. Moreover, each of these, like you don't know if you really believe in your beliefs until you have a proper debate with the other side to make sure. Moreover, each
each of these very different views of race produced flourishes of rhetoric and travesties of logic leading to dire social consequences, though of very different sorts in the two eras. Other, addition, other additions to this edition include a critique of John Rawls' conception of justice and a re-examination of the so-called trickle-down theory, which I think is bullshit, but we'll see what he thinks, behind tax cuts for the rich. There are other revisions from the preface to the final chapter, the latter being extensively rewritten, rewritten, re, rewritten, re, <laughs> rewritten. Why can't I write that? Rewritten, rewritten, to bring together and relate in the themes of the other chapters and to make unmistakably clear the intellectuals and society. Jam. Oh, this is more cool than swords. Okay, we gotta read the sleeve. Okay, wealth, poverty, and politics challenges the assumptions, the definitions, the evidence, and the reasoning. Of most of what is said about differences in income and wealth by people in the media, in academia, and in politics. After an extensive examination of factors behind economic differences between nations and within nations, including geographic, demographic, cultural, and political factors, the last section of the book is, search, is a searching critique of leading income redistribution. Essentially, a fact based 
study which subjects many beliefs from various parts of the etiological spectrum my baby boy to the ultimate test of empirical evidence these challenged beliefs about the causes of economic differences range from genetic determinism to exploitation and discrimination in each case the analysis follows where the facts lead superstitions and micro misconceptions that initially hobbled her ability to assimilate into Western society. She writes movingly of her reconciliation on his deathbed with her devout father, who had disowned her when she renounced Islam after the September 11th attacks, as well as with her mother and cousins in Somalia and in Europe. Nomad is a portrait of a family literally torn apart by the clash of civilizations, but it is also a touching, uplifting, and often funny, she was funny, humor just is essential. Hi Bobo, another troublemaker has joined us, so I'm sorry. The cat just gonna, the cat's gonna scratch, and the cat is gonna scratch, she can't do anything about it. <laughs> We're almost done. She writes with the leaf, I love what you just do. Seattle loves much of what she encounters. She fears. 
just the Constitution, let's see. An expanded edition of the first ever primer of Canada's Constitution for anyone who wants to understand the supreme law of the land. The Canadian Constitution makes Canada's Constitution readily accessible to readers. It includes the complete text of the Constitution Acts of 1867 and 1982, accompanied by an explanation of what what each section means, along with a glossary of key terms, a short history of the Constitution, and a timeline of important constitutional events. This sounds really interesting. The Canadian Constitution explains how the Supreme Court of Canada works, and describes the people and issues involved in leading constitutional cases. Author Adam Adorek, a law professor at the University of Ottawa, provides the only index so far to the Canadian Constitution, as well as fascinating background on the Supreme Court and the Constitution. This revised and expanded edition is a great primer for those coming to Canada's constitution for the first time, and a useful reference work for students and scholars. So, um, of course, you may, like, I'm sure, it depends where you live, because I know there are many countries who are not acting absolutely insane about this virus, but Canada has completely, like, scrubbed over our entire constitution, and we no longer have any rights and freedoms, and I know people are like, lives are more important than your rights. But, I mean, if you look in history, giving away all of your rights doesn't end well. 
Prime Minister, oh, is she the Prime Minister? No other Prime Minister in modern times sought to change the British nation and its place in the world as radically as she did. Published in a single volume for the very first time, Margaret Thatcher is the story of her remarkable life told in her own words, the definitive account of an extraordinary woman and consummate politician bringing together her best-selling memoirs the Downing Street years and the path to power, writing candidly about her upbringing and the early years, and early years in the formation of her character and values. She details the experiences that propelled her to the very top in a man's world. She offers a riveting first-hand history of the major events, the crises and triumphs 